Hey guys, welcome to VFX vlog number two, where I will, well, at least attempt to answer your visual effects and filmmaking questions. Now, one of the most common questions I get asked is, what computer should I get for After Effects or Premiere or 3D Studio Max? Now, obviously, the faster the better, but, you know, there's got to be a limit to how much you want to spend, so you got to see what's within your means. I myself have an i7 2700K, I've got 16 gig of RAM and I've got a NVIDIA GTX 560. Um, people always assume that my computer renders like that, that my sequences and my previous go like that because they see them in my tutorials. But guys, my tutorials are edited. I don't want you sitting there for 10 minutes watching the progress bar creep across the screen. So keep that in mind, especially when you work in After Effects and you have a composition with a whole lot of layers and maybe you even enable motion blur, which is a big drag on the CPU. Things will start to get slow as you scroll around in your composition. The preview will take a while to get rendered when you're rendering out the sequence. It might take five, 10 minutes, depending on how many things you have in there. Now, the only way you can get around that is if you can spend a fortune to buy a render farm or have a whole bunch of servers that do nothing but help you out with After Effects. Now, obviously you have to stay within your means, but a lot of RAM is helpful, a strong CPU is helpful. Also, because After Effects and Premiere do write a lot of temporary files to disk, um, if you have a fast drive, preferably an SSD drive, that will actually help render as well. Um, but yes, yeah, stay within your means. Just don't expect it to be as fast as you see them at tutorials because that's just, you know, that's just a trick. It's not actually that fast. Question number two on the most common questions I get asked is, what camera should I use? That is such an open-ended question because A, what do you want to do? Like, how long have you been doing video? Um, what's your budget? What do you want to film? There's a whole range of different cameras that can suit your needs, depending on what you want to film and how much you want to spend on it and what your knowledge is. If you're totally new, to filmmaking, if you've never done a short film or a visual effect, use your phone, seriously, just use your phone, any camera that you can find, um, ask a friend, borrow one somewhere. Don't spend $2,000 on a camera just so that one week later you can find out, yeah, actually, I'm not really that interested off. If you don't know what you're doing, don't buy a DSLR. DSLRs are good for people who know what all the controls do so they can get that really good quality out of it. Obviously, if you're willing to learn, go for it, but if you're just starting out, any camera will do to start making films, start getting a feel for it and see whether you actually like it. And when once you've been doing it for a month or a few months or half a year, a year, and you think this is really something I'm committed to, upgrade your camera, buy something bigger, buy an entry level DSLR, buy a, you know, if you've got the money, buy a Red Epic or something. Um, but scale it up, don't jump all the way in and just so you can find out later that you don't like it anymore. Now, I'm not ignoring your actual questions. And here's one from the Golden Coyote. He wants to know, how can I make my mask look a little bit more natural? How can I blend them out a little bit? Also, what is additive blending, especially in relation to a lighting layer? And for that, I'm going to jump into After Effects to show you exactly what I mean. Now, what I have here is the composition from an explosion tutorial. And it does take a little bit to render, even though I have a fairly strong computer. So do be aware, this is normal. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, let's add some lighting so I can show you how to feather out your mask and how to make the lighting look a little bit more natural. For that, I'm going to take this base composition I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D. Um, so under that, you can also go to Edit uh, Duplicate and to achieve exactly the same thing. Now, this is exactly the same layer, nothing's different. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to set this blend mode to additive. Bam, it looks really, really bright. The reason this is happening is because it literally adds the color of the pixels together. So black plus black is still black. White plus white is still white. Um, but if you add, different colors together, it increases the intensity and the brightness of the pixels. So if you have something that's, that's green, so that's 02550, and you add red to it, which is 25500, now your pixel value is now gonna be 2552550, it's gonna be yellow. And in a similar way, all of the pixel colors are being added, so you're increasing the intensity of all the pixels. Obviously black won't increase the intensity, but white will make the pixel entirely white, and everything in between will just brighten up the pixel. So now what we can do is we can actually take the masking tool, take an ellipse tool, for example, and drag a big ellipse around the explosion. This will add a mask to the lighting layer, which will then add a nice round bright mask around the explosion. Now, obviously this looks kind of crappy because it's just it's totally unnatural, it's really harsh edge. What you can do is you can expand this mask property by clicking on this little twisty here, and it has a bunch of properties. So it's got a mask path, a feather, opacity, and expansion. You can feather this mask out by increasing the mask feather. And what will happen is you can see how the edge is getting more blurry of the explosion. 
it's just being softened out and therefore it blends a little bit more natural into the scene and it doesn't look quite as out of place. If you don't have a mask feather, you go set that to zero, you've got a really harsh edge on the mask. By increasing this to, I don't know, 150 maybe, you put, 150 is probably a bit less, uh, let's go up to 300. So suddenly you've got a really nice soft edge around the mask and this is how we make lighting and mask look a lot more natural. Obviously you have to make sure that, you know, it doesn't always work if you have, for example, if you're cloning yourself and you're masking out one feather a bit too much, you start seeing copies of your clone in the background, which you don't really want. So just watch out what you do, but this is really how you make masks a lot softer. Now, here's another question from you. I think I got this one on Facebook from Shit Pro. Um, he's asking, whenever I export something in After Effects, I get really low quality and there's no audio. How do I fix this? Now, again, I'm going to show you in After Effects because it just makes it so much easier. So let's for a second assume I'm okay with this composition and I want to export it. So I'm going to add it to my render queue, which I can do by going to composition and add to render queue. Um, it's already one there. Let's remove that. And in the output module, this is where you define the quality. So right now it's being exported as lossless AVI. Here you can change the format. So I can make a QuickTime movie, for example. Now, one important thing is it's got format option in here. You've got to click on this one because this sets the quality. If this sits down at 0% or 5%, you're going to get horrible compression and it's going to look really, really, really crappy. Um, obviously, the higher your quality, the bigger your file size is going to be. So you've got to play around with this a little bit and see you know, what gives you good results without going crazy big. But audio, very important. Now, I'm using After Effects CC. In After Effects CS6 and before, this is disabled by default. You do not export audio by default, but there's a little checkbox here that you can tick to say, yes, export my audio. Or in After Effects CC, which is what I'm using, you can just go audio output enabled. Um, so set that to on, and then you can specify the kilohertz, the bit, and whether it's in stereo or mono. You can also format it. You can you know compress it if you wanted to. And this way, you will export your video at the quality that you specify with or without audio, whether you need to, and then go OK and obviously start rendering by hitting the render button. So I hope this answered some of the common questions that I've been getting. Keep leaving questions, leave them on this video and I'll get around to answering them. Leave them on my Facebook page or send me a Twitter message or obviously send me a YouTube message. It's fine as well. Um, I will get around to answering them in the next vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to thumbs up, like it, share it around. Um, Remember to subscribe and check out my main channel as well where I've actually got all my main content, all the visual effects tutorials and a lot more content for you to go through if you're interested. Well, I hope you enjoyed this vlog and until next time, I will see you later.